Hi and welcome to City Happenings. I'm Mayor David Black. Our police department joined with other local law enforcement groups in a wet lab. We'll tell you what went on. And our police department is happy to be part of Project Life Save. You'll meet someone who benefited from this program. You'll also meet two members of our fire department who went beyond their assigned duties in order to render aid. All of these stories are next in City Happenings for December 27th. Thanks, Mayor Black. Area law enforcement held its anti-drunk driving wet lab again this year. Just where does this fall in the scheme of things? It's important because it's showing uh, people at what rate alcohol is metabolized in the body and how quickly a person can become unsafe to drive. Um, oftentimes we think it takes a lot of drinking uh, and uh, the point of this is to try and show that uh, alcohol usage can very quickly render somebody um, at too high of a blood or breath alcohol level to be safe to drive. If we get one person to sit up and take notice, one person to, to uh, understand that the dangers of this and, and to know that, uh, that it is dangerous out there, I worry every day as you do of our loved ones, our ourselves driving up and down the road, you know, and, and it's 24 hours a day. You know, yesterday morning we arrested a drunk uh, right by Papillion on Giles Road, uh, you know, at 6.30 in the morning, you know, at, at twice the legal limit for second offense. Um, those people are driving up and down the roads as our kids are going to school. As you said, you know, the tragedies of late with Dr. Smith and, and the four motorcycles on Interstate 29 just shows that, that the, the intoxicated and impaired drivers are out there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We want, and, and this is my big thing, nobody makes plans to go out and get drunk and get arrested or kill somebody. It's just that when they decide to go out and get drunk and everything else, they lose all of those um, uh, safeguards that they have and suddenly uh, that's what happens. They're either being arrested or, you know, unfortunately they're in a bad crash and somebody gets hurt or somebody gets killed. I think sensitivities are high right now with the drunk driving. Uh, you've got the case where the doctor uh, was uh, killed picking up his kids or taking them to school in the morning and the case where the juvenile uh, ran the red light at 144th and Q and, uh, and killed the, um, the young woman who had just been married like a month or two before. Yeah, there's a lot of really heart-wrenching stories out there right now that have happened recently in or near Sarpy County and I think, uh, yeah, I think people's, uh, people are really on edge on this topic right now. Okay. Overall cooperation is what makes it all happen. You know, that's the one thing that I'm really proud of. Our department heads and I applaud every one of them have come together and that we are all one. Uh, I can call Papillion Police, La Vista Police, State Patrol, anybody. I need assistance doing this. I need manpower. I need to use your meeting room at your police station. And we're going to do it. We have a great working relationship. And that's part of what we're looking at here is the unity of the officers, no matter what color the uniform is. There is no distinction when we're out there doing the job. We're all uh, brothers and sisters in uniform working to protect our community. Our police department is actively involved in Project Lifesaver. One beneficiary says she's grateful for it. Project Lifesaver has been just that, a lifesaver, in giving me peace of mind as the caregiver for my mom, and then um, knowing that if my mom were to wander from home, we would be able to find her. We would have a way to locate her. It gave us such great peace of mind and I recommend it to everyone. As an educator of special needs students as well, I've worked with many parents who would have loved to have had the um, information and the peace of mind really that Project Lifesaver um, affords. A friend of mine um, told me about Project Lifesaver. She actually brought an article from a newspaper in Virginia when she was out visiting family members knowing that my mother who was living with us who had Alzheimer's we would have need of the uh, service of Project Lifesaver and she thought it was something we could use. We have two city paramedics who are recognized for going above and beyond to help someone in need. They were en route with a patient when they witnessed a car accident and stopped to help. We typically go to a call after the fact. Um, this happened right in front of me and um, you get a little bit different mindset, especially being in Omaha. Um, you know that you don't have your guys right behind you going to this call. So the number one priority was to make sure that our patient in the back was okay. Luckily Jay was back there with them and then we had another um, student and she was, uh, she was okay. 
So my then the second priority was to make sure that we can do whatever we can do to help um, that patient. You could tell something was going on because Matt was calling to me from the front before we pulled over. We did end up pulling over right away. Uh, Matt kind of said, there's been an accident right away. We heard people running up to the med unit telling us the car's on fire and there's someone inside. Uh, made sure our patient was stable at the time. Made sure the EMT in the back with us was comfortable taking the patient care. Checked with the patient, said, you know, there's someone who might need our help. Is it all right with you if we check? And she said, that's fine. I had two decisions to make, either go down 72nd Street or go down 84th Street. And as we were leaving the, the place that we're at with our first patient, I was going to go down 72nd Street. Well, for whatever reason, I decided to head down 84th Street. Um, and if I wouldn't have done that, I, you know, obviously we wouldn't have came upon this. So that, that, was, a, that was the first thing that I think that this individual's um, stars were aligned with all of us. And again, if, if we didn't have a paramedic student, if that patient wasn't a, uh, a code 2 patient, if that patient wasn't um, very receptive of us, she was okay if we left and, and went out and tried to help this other individual that got in the car wreck, none of this would have happened. They said the car's on fire. Matt instructed me to grab the fire extinguisher, which I did. Uh, approached the vehicle. There was no, fi no flames, no fire. Uh, made patient contact by crawling into the front window. Uh, the patient was unconscious, felt a pulse. The patient wasn't breathing. Um, Matt came right away, asked me the patient condition. I said he's not breathing. Uh, immediately attempted to uh, readjust the patient's head and neck because of the way he was positioned, uh, closed his airway. Uh, eventually managed to uh, pull his neck and shoulders out, uh, opened up the airway. The patient started attempting to breathe on his own. Uh, I asked for a bag valve mask, which Matt got, attached to oxygen. We began assisting ventilations for the patient. I hope that everyone had a safe and Merry Christmas. As we head to 2011, I urge everyone to be safe. Please keep Papillion safe during this holiday week. And please attend our city council meetings. They're held the first and third Tuesday of each month. If you can't attend the council meetings, you can watch the replays right here on Papio Vision Channel 18. The first airing of each new meeting is on the following Thursday. Papio Vision shows the meetings on Thursdays at 4 and 7 p.m., Fridays at 9 p.m., Saturdays and Sundays at 1 and 7 p.m., and Mondays at 4 and 7 p.m. Now, for more about Papillion, go to www.papillion.org or just call the mayor's hotline at 827-1111. Thanks for watching.